Hello everyone, this is Kev here from LifeSuccessEngineer.com and today I am joined by Gareth with FBA UK underscore on Instagram and uh, this is episode number 14 of the Tribe of Arbitrages. This is where I speak to resellers online, whether we're doing retail arbitrage, wholesale, online arbitrage, it doesn't really matter. We talk and share everything to do with the journey. So. Thanks very much, Gareth, for joining me. How are you doing? Are you well? I'm good, mate. Thanks for having me. So did you want to just give people just a, a quick bio of who you are, how much experience you've had in the reselling so far in your journey? Yeah, so uh, I'm Gareth. I'm from South Wales. I'm 31. Um, so I started reselling probably around about two and a half, three years ago, like most people on eBay. Um, Odd bits here and there, uh, charity shops, car boot sales. Saying that, when I first started, it was probably just stuff around the house. And then about a year to a year and a half ago, I realized that people are actually making a decent living off it, um, going to car boot sales, charity shops. So I started getting into that. Um, then about a year, it's hard to remember um, actual time skills, but I think around about a year ago, I started a little side hustle um, and I was selling uh, branded clothing, vintage clothing on eBay making a decent little living, uh, still working full time. Then I started Amazon FBA, uh, July, 2018. Um, yeah, up until now really. So I took that seriously at the start of this year. Um, seriously in terms of looking to go full time, um, eventually. And then about a month ago, I've taken the plunge and I'm full time in Amazon OA. So yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Um, so we'll, we'll get straight on to the questions then. Okay, so the yeah. first question is How has failure or apparent failure set you up for a later success? Do you have any favorite failures of yours, Gareth? Um, let's have a think. Failures. Um, well, I think one thing certainly, um, and that was part of the reason why I just took the plunge. Cause I mean, your ducks are never going to be in a line. You never, it's never going to be a perfect opportunity to do anything. So, um, I never used to, and I know nobody does anyway, but I never used to like being outside my comfort zone. And it's obviously looking now back at that in hindsight, I never used to like that. So one of my problems was I never started. I used to read way too much and I used to just get almost satisfaction just from reading. Um, and not actually implementing any of the things that I was reading or any of the things I was seeing on YouTube. So one thing that I've changed now is actually trying to, um, so I suppose that's turning a negative into a positive, actively trying to seek things that are going to get me outside of my comfort zone type thing. Um, so knowing that that's obviously going to grow me as an individual, going to grow the business, hence start an Amazon FBA full time. Um, yeah, so I don't know if that's really answering the question, but I never... I mean, you I mean, not in terms of never starting something, I think a lot of people can just, like I said, I used to take confidence in just reading and feeling like I had actually achieved something just from reading, say, a book that was um, helping me. So, yeah, I think that's something I've really tried to improve over the last six months to a year is um, really trying to get outside of my comfort zone, trying to do things that are going to help me grow as a person and help the business, really. So. Yeah. yeah, I think I think you make a good point there, to be honest, Gareth, because I think yeah. when, when we when we think about any type of personal development, whether that is sort of reading, reading books, listening to audios, um, podcasts, YouTube videos, whatever it is, you, you, you can feel like you're taking action by yeah. just doing, just by read, like by consuming yeah. information. But it's actually like false if you if you think about it, because you've got to you've got to try going 90 percent action. Yeah, it means nothing. And it, yeah, if you're not putting it into action, it actually means nothing. So like I said, I was I was definitely guilty of that. And I still am to a degree. If I'm looking at new, um, like I've been looking at private label a little bit recently. But um, yeah, it's, it's easy to do that. Everyone's guilty of that at some point. Of course. Okay, so uh, question two then is, uh, what is one of or uh, the, the best or most, most worthwhile investment that you've ever made in yourself, whether that is, could be anything that you've done in terms of time, money, or energy? Um, one of the best investments I've made in myself. Um, 
I mean, reading's always a good investment. That's probably a bit of cliche and it's, it's a bit vague, but reading's always a good investment in yourself, self-development. Um, do, you have any, uh, do you have any book recommendations? I was speaking to you, wasn't I, the other week about book recommendations. So I've been reading Clockwork, um, which is a really good book. I Profit First literally changed my mind completely in terms of money management. So I would definitely recommend, because a lot of the books are not really um, Amazon-based so they, or e-commerce-based as much, whereas Profit First is very much Amazon FBA-based. So um, I found that very, very useful. Uh, what am I reading at the moment? To be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into Blinkist. I know you said that you, I saw something you posted on Instagram, and that's, yeah. that's brilliant in terms of, so it's like the snippets, all the golden bits out of the book say condense into 15, 20 minutes. So I've been doing a free trial of that the last week. Um, at the moment, I'm reading uh, The Power of Habit mm -hmm. by, I don't even know it's by. But yeah, so that's an investment by reading. I think the biggest investment I've probably made in myself is in property. So this is probably a little bit outside of Amazon FBA. Um, but I'm getting into property at the moment. So that's another thing that I just put on the back burner for the longest time. Oh, I'm going to get into property. I watch Homes Under the Hammer every day. Of course I'm going to get into property. Um, and I just never actually took the leap of faith, really. So at the start of this year, I attended a property course. And like I said, it's always been something that's interested me. Um, and I actually signed up for a training course, which is a two-year training with uh, loads of different modules um, at the start of this year. So that was quite a quite a hefty investment so that's probably the biggest investment in terms of financial that I've made in myself but you're always trying to make little investments in yourself I think the main thing is reading and just yeah. I think with reading on the, on the subject of reading as well I think sometimes I try my best not to just get hung up on reading too much because sometimes you've got to do it yourself You've got to get involved. You've got to experience it yourself. Like when you're reading other people's experiences, good and bad, that's great that you can take things from those books. But at the same time, everyone's experience and everyone's journey is different. So you don't want to get too hung up on doing it the same as somebody else, if that makes sense. So I'm always conscious of just trying to take little snippets from everywhere, but ultimately mm. do it yourself. Yeah, and that's why... Uh, we mentioned Blinkist just there. If you guys are watching this and you're not, you're not sure what Blinkist is, Blinkist is a fantastic app that I found uh, maybe about a year or so ago now. And you basically sign up and it, it's just got, it's just got like, uh, they're called Blinks. And it's like maybe 10 Blinks for each book. And it's really the golden nuggets out of each book, which is fantastic. You can listen to an entire book within minutes. Um, which is it's a really, really quite cool thing. So I'll end up putting a, a link in the description, I'm sure. Uh, so question number three then is, in the last five years, what new belief, behavior, or habit has most improved your life? Mm. Um, probably running, to be fair. Probably running is the thing that's... Um, so I, I find like running quite, I find it better than meditation for me. So I do try, I've got like a bit of a love-hate relationship with meditation. I enjoy it because I enjoy having like 10 minutes of silence in the morning to myself and getting into it. But in terms of meditation, I, quite, I find it quite hard to like sit still for 10 minutes and, and just concentrate. And I know that's, that's the main thing, like concentrating on breathing. But in terms of running, I really find that that... Um, that really helps me mentally more than anything, and obviously physically as well. Um, I feel like if I if I keep up with the running, it helps me in other areas of my life in terms of eating better. Um, yeah, like I said, mentally it helps me as well. So I probably started running. I've always like been on and off, but probably started running at the start of this year and actually trying to go three or four times a week. I know you're the man with running; you do a daily run, so I'm not on Kev's level, but um, yeah. Well, I do, I do try to run as much as possible. I just, I really, really enjoy it. It's one of those, it, it's incredibly addictive for me. And um, yeah. what, what I love about running is like, it's that feeling of like, I'm absolutely knackered. I really want to stop. But like, it's just that inner battle within yourself where you think to yourself, do you know what? I'm going to go a little bit more. I'm going to go a little bit more. Just, just to keep trying to push that envelope, really. 
definitely. I think with running, it is, and I, I know a lot of people used to say this before I started, but it is, I would say, 90% mental with running. I think it is such a mental uh, battle um, as opposed to physical. I mean, obviously, you need your physical fitness up a little bit if you're going to be doing a lot of miles, but um, I find when I'm when I'm constantly running, my, like I said, my mentality improves, um, like you said, pushing yourself a little bit further, and then that trickles over into other areas of your life. So, yeah, I, I, I'm not... Yeah, I think it's, so. I think it's, it's like just work out in general. I mean, obviously working out, going, exercising, going to the gym, all those things are going to be beneficial, but it's just that element of really pushing yourself more than you think you're capable of. Cause that does then, especially entrepreneurship, it goes hand in hand. Really? It does go into the other. You run with music out of interest. You run with music or do you run just in your own heads or? No, I've, all, I've always got to run with music. Always. Yeah. I cannot, I cannot just run without any music. I have to, um, I have to. Like where I'm like, that's where I'm like heading. That's my goal to like run without music and not have to. I know that's, you say that's a goal because you think, well, we'll just run without music. Like what difference does it make? But do you follow David Goggins on, have you heard of David no. Goggins? Yeah, and I know who he is, but I don't really follow him. He's a, he's he's a, a machine, machine, right? Yeah, he's a machine, so he's crazy. Like, um, and he was saying he was on uh, on a podcast before saying about running without music. So, I say that's a goal of where I want to get to. But I, I feel like I rely on music as well. I rely on that like um, that banger of a song or like that like upbeat song that when I'm like struggling towards the end, that's gonna like motivate me to get over the line. But yeah, I just, I'm just interested whether other people do because I know a lot of people don't. I know a lot of people actually that don't run with music, which is interesting because. Yeah. I couldn't think of anything worse at the moment. But. <laughs> no, could I? Um, okay, then. So question number four is, what best advice would you give to somebody about to enter the world of arbitrage? Um, someone who's just starting out? or Yeah, just, just somebody who's just starting out. Um, you know, you, you, of all the experience you've now got doing this for the last couple of years and things, what, what would you say to somebody who just said to you, Gareth, I, I want to get started. What's the best advice that you could give me? Um, so I think if I was going to give advice on just starting, I know for me when I first started and I set up the limited company, um, so I set up a limited company from day one basically with the, um, with the arbitrage business. I just wanted to get everything in line from the start, but I didn't get everything in line from the start um, in terms of like a power team and stuff like that. Um, I didn't have everything going to the same email address. I didn't do everything through, say, one spending card from the start. So I'm just coming up now to my first year, uh, my first end of year at the end of July for my first, so since I've been limited. Um, and it's been super frustrating because for the first month, uh, three months, I was like all over the place in terms of spending some on this card, a little bit. So I think my advice to someone starting off would be to streamline everything in that sense as much as possible so get everything under one email address spend everything through one card i know that's difficult because sometimes people then progress to an amex card and that can't be helped but um yeah i don't know if that's advice no i think that's, i think that's brilliant advice to tell you the truth i think that's such a big thing i think the we can talk tactics, we can talk about do this when you're doing your research and make, if you want to scale, we can talk about this. But I think fundamentally, the organization, the accounting is so, so vitally important and uh, some great, great advice there. If you could streamline everything through just sort of one, one card, one email, like one Google Drive, and it all just like links all together and it's organized in some type of some type of way like it doesn't have to be super structured or anything but just try to streamline it as much as possible so you're not here there and everywhere because there's nothing worse there is nothing worse than getting to the end of the year or six months down the line and you're trying to find out what you did six months ago and you, it's just impossible to sort out well, that's it. You, only, you only realize that you've got an issue when something arises that's an issue so i didn't realize that it was an issue until i started doing my end of year and i started explaining transactions uploading different accounts and then i was just like oh then you realize how um how much time you could have saved if you'd obviously but it's one of those things i mean i wouldn't get beat i i did I wouldn't do it any different if I did it again, because when I did it in my head, I was doing it the best way I could. It's only now in hindsight, which is obviously 2020 
I look back and I thought, well, actually, I could have done that a little bit different if I'd done. So, I mean, not a massive thing. Another thing in line with that as well, what I would do is, like I just said on the previous question, I would try and do stuff for yourself because there's so much free resource out there and so much free material, which is great. And obviously, it's amazing to go on uh, your channel, go on the Amazon Success Creation Boys channel. There's loads of golden nuggets out there. But I think the best way to learn is just to implement it yourself because at the end of the day, you, um, Isaac and Brandon, they've done it for themselves, but that might not necessarily work for you in your business and how you do it. So I think sometimes you can get a little bit um, disheartened or whatever, whatever the word is, if you're trying to do it and it's maybe not as successful as you're doing it or it's not as good as you're doing it or your spreadsheets are not as streamlined as yours are. Do you know what I'm saying? So no, I know exactly what you mean because... I mean, it, it, I do believe, I do believe in modeling. I do believe in coaching and mentoring. But at the same time, the reality is we are all in different circumstances. We've got yeah. different skill sets. We've got different scenarios. You know, we're, yeah. you, you know, one person may be in a completely different situation than another person, which means that we're not going to, we're not going to have the same journey. We all want the same sort of things and we want to build the same business and we want to become successful at the end of the day. But at the same time, you've got to remember that you've got to, you've got to play to your strengths and your circumstance. So I think that's some great advice there. Yeah. yeah okay, I was going to say, like, oh, I'm sorry. Go on. No, go on. I was going to say, like, what you've got to think is you can get so hung up on all the little, little bits. So, and that's not to say, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying that the information that you put out there is not great and it's not really beneficial because it is. And I think without that, I wouldn't be where I am today, especially without the Amazon Success Creation Boys, because they helped me out a lot, and they still do help me out a lot. But I think it's, you've got to strip it back, and it's not that difficult of a business if you actually think about what you're doing. You're just purchasing stock to send into Amazon to sell. And I think when you realize that it's a very easy business model, then it's a lot easier to then put the bells and whistles on it, trying to improve little bits. Instead of getting so hung up on the spreadsheets and all the little bits and systemizing this at the start, you're forgetting what the actual what the actual goal is or what the business is. So, yeah. Some great, some great advice there. Okay, so number five then is, what are bad recommendations you hear relating to arbitrage? Um, bad recommendations. Um, bad, bad advice. What, what, what do you sometimes hear or see out online where you think to yourself, yeah. God, that, that is, you know, from your experience, that is not good advice. I think Instagram is littered with bad advice. So I think Instagram is is really toxic. It can be super beneficial. You can get a lot of, you can get a lot of stuff off there that's going to benefit you if you're following the right people. But I think I worry about a lot of the stuff that's being put on. In, I mean, worry is probably the wrong word, but because um, I think a lot of people getting started on Amazon is painted as an easy business model. It's painted as a get rich quick, or this is simple. You buy stuff from Tesco and you send it into Amazon. But when you strip it all down, it is a business. So um, it's really easy to be blinded by someone chucking up 30 grand sales in a month when they're given no context as to actually whether that's profit or anything. So I think, um, I think I'd just be wary. Uh, and I feel like I've got a little bit of life experience at my age where I can sort of sift out the, the bullshit, for lack of a better term. But I think Instagram, you've got to be careful with a lot of people on Instagram who are trying to give out free advice or give out, um, yeah, free advice or, or modeling your business or trying to aspire to what someone's supposedly done in a month, which means nothing in the grand scheme of things. So, yeah, if I was giving advice, I would just be careful with. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. You, and I think that that just goes with all social media, to be honest. Like, because you, you never really know at what point you're going into the journey. So like, you know, if, if, if you go across my channel, for example, this YouTube channel has got like over a thousand videos. Okay. So if, if somebody comes in at video 602, they've got no sort of context really of everything else that's come before it. Do you see what I mean? And, and that can be maybe potentially, it can be quite um, confusing yeah. where things are and, and what, how do you put the pieces of the puzzle together? So the same with Instagram, you can go through different posts and different stories and things. And, but the, the reality is, I feel like, like you said, it's about get started, like get started, go out and just, and, and just get started, have a look at some products, just do the, the basics to begin with. 
like open a seller central account if you haven't got one right now and just and stumble your way through i remember when i um when i first created my first ever shipment i had yeah. no idea how i didn't even know the the amazon labels i was like mm. i don't fully yeah. understand you're supposed to cover this barcode and how how does that work and i don't do you see what i mean like it's all literally Sorry to interrupt. That's the type of stuff that people love, like that thing. So I know when I first started, well, a few months ago when I was doing a few more Instagram, people love like basic stuff like that. What size poly bags do you use? Where do you get your poly bags from? What type of tape do you use? Do you use a tape gun? So I know for more experienced sellers, you think, oh, well, that's obvious. But when I started, it was, it was so foreign to me. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. How big are my boxes? Do I pack my boxes? Do I put packaging? Do I... You know what I'm saying? All the easy stuff that now you take for granted um, was when you're starting. But I think with you, you're saying about your channel, it's completely different with your YouTube and Instagram channel. Because I feel as if you're not peacocking, you're not flexing when you're doing the stuff. You're just, you're trying to help people, but it comes across as genuine, which is, yeah. um, which I think is rare on Instagram. There's a handful of people that are trying to do that. They're actually trying to help people. But I think for the, for the most part, it's people just flexing. People are just saying, oh, I've, I've made a hundred grand in a month. I'm amazing. Look at me, buy my course. Yeah, so. nah. no, I think, I think it's so important to, to try focusing. Every video that I try to create, it's always got, I'm trying to have one specific outcome that is like actionable, like yeah. on that video. So somebody yeah. can actually put it into practice from that video. You know, um, that, think, that's pretty much the goal. I think with your, with your videos as well, I feel like they cater to, um, to a lot of diff a lot of people because you're obviously quite experienced in Amazon. You're you systemize your business, a lot of it's automated. So I take a lot of um so I know you put videos up recently about senior assistants, which is so crazy that you're putting up at that time because I'm currently at a point where I'm actually hiring a senior assistant. So oh, really? yeah, that's so strange. And then you put up a YouTube video the other day about going through all the steps. I was thinking it was almost as if you read my mind. Um so yeah, I feel as if with you, you're catering for all types of people who are starting the journey, which is so beneficial. Like I'll watch videos and I'll think, wow, that's amazing. I didn't think of that. Or I didn't think of that when I'm doing an interview um, with a senior assistant. Or So that's great for people. It's, yeah, like you said, if someone can do a video too, you've got the 600 previous videos where people can actually look. So yeah, yeah. it's yeah. definitely awesome. Appreciate that. Um, okay then, so the last question then is question number six, which is, when you feel overwhelmed or unfocused, or you've lost your focus temporarily, what do you do to get back on track to take massive action? Um, do you know what I try, when I lose focus, right, and this, I try and welcome those times when I'm losing focus, because I feel as if those are the times when I think like, this is when it matters when I'm doing it. So I've been trying to like not so much worry about being motivated, but worry about being disciplined because I think that's the most important thing. So I think people who are motivated are great, but motivation basically just means you're doing it when you want to do it, whereas discipline means obviously you're doing it when you don't want to do it. So obviously everyone gets those moments. Um, ob obviously everybody gets times where they can't be asked or they don't want to do stuff. For me, what helps is running. A hundred percent running helps. So. If I, if I wake up in the morning and I'm, and I'm knackered from the night before, I can't be asked, I've got no motivation, I either just crack on with it and I suck it up and I do it and I think I'd hate it 10 times more if I was back in my full-time job working nine to five or I'd hate it 10 times more if I wasn't doing what I want to do. It's all first world problems at the end of the day or if I'm still in um, a bad place, I'll just try and go on a run and do some exercise or I'll just take the day off. I mean... If I'm in a position where I feel like I have done a lot of work, um, I'm quite lucky now where I've outsourced a lot of the business in terms of sourcing, I've outside, outsourced the prep side of the business. So if I want to have a day off and I've done enough in the week, I'll just have a day off. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. So, yeah. I mean, that's I think, part of the flexibility. Yeah, well, I, what, I lo what I love about what you've just said there is one of the really key elements to long-term success, right? I call it... Um, I've been really thinking about the, the cycles of motivation. And when people, yeah. like you just said, when people are motivated, when they're inspired, you know, they, they're going to go out and take some action. But it's, yeah. when you, it's when you don't feel like it. When you, you, know, you, you wake up in the morning and you're thinking to yourself, oh, 
I can't be bothered with this because we're all we're just human, right? We all we're always going to have those moments yeah. where you're knackered, you can't be asked, you you're feeling down or whatever it is. And I think it's actually the the success, the long term success is the people that are able still to take some level of action when they're at their lowest and still yeah. make progress when they're at their lowest. So instead and of just well, I do. If I do it when I can't be asked to do it, I'll feel 10 times better about doing whatever task I've just done as opposed to when I'm motivated enough for doing it. It'll almost improve my day. So that's probably something I would do is when I can't be bothered, I will just do it anyway because I know that will improve my day. Yeah. Um, quite a weird like paradox, but yeah. So it's, it's all about discipline. Isn't it? But it's easy to say that as well. I mean, by saying it, it doesn't actually mean anything. It doesn't mean that some days I wake up and I actually can't be asked and I don't do anything. I mean, we're all human. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That's but, part but of the I think, I, Yeah, but I think it's, um, it's definitely about the just becoming aware, just having some awareness of, oh, I can't be asked today. Or I'm not feeling great today. Or I'm not feeling motivated today. And actually having the awareness to go, do you know what? I'm still going to take this action. Even though I can't be bothered, I still want to make a step forward. And you, like you said, it will make you feel better. You'll, you'll feel great afterwards. And um, in some ways, you know, just having those one or two actions when you're feeling at your lowest can feel better than, you know, the 10 actions that you took when you're like motivated and on fire sort of thing. Yeah. Can I just yeah. say something? I, I, we got time by the end of the interview. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, right, so this is something that helped me. So in terms of, sorry about that, two steps. Um, so this, oh, sorry, hang on. Let me just close Slack because my VAs are going crazy. Um, <laughs> that's part and parcel of running the business. That's, that's the, the reality. Yeah, give me a bit of time and speak to the goat. Um, yeah, so one thing that changed me, right, and this, isn't, this is just advice for other people that is almost unfortunate that it took this. So I started Amazon FBA last year in July 2018, and by no means am I trying to put a downer on the conversation but last summer I so I've got Crohn's disease right so I was diagnosed probably about a year and a half ago it was manageable um, and then last summer I got really ill with my Crohn's and I had to go into hospital and have an operation right and I got really ill from it and it was something that I hadn't planned I was taking life for granted taking health for granted I was taking everything for granted taking Amazon for granted and it was only until I got really seriously ill from my Crohn's disease um and i went into hospital that it like lit a fire under me and it was when i had that and i had to go through that i come out and i thought this is it like this is what i need to do now i need to give up my work so that was part of the reason why i gave up work as well because i just thought life's too short i'm just doing something i don't want to do um so i got really ill and it was from getting really ill that, that gave me the push start or the kick up the ass for lack of a better term to actually get started and do what i wanted to do so I know a lot of people do say this anyway, and people think, oh, yeah, it'll never happen to me, or blah, blah, blah. I'd never even been to hospital prior to that. So I was always of the mindset, oh, it'll never happen to me. I'm fine. I'm healthy, blah, 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 taking everything for granted. And like I said, it was only till something like as serious as that happened that I then had the, the kick of the ass I needed. So I think for people, it's all about just going for it. You don't want to get to a stage where something bad happens. And from experience, I'm saying this from experience, something bad happens to then give you the push that you need to get into it. You just got to think life's too short. And like I said at the start of this conversation, your decks are never going to be in a line. There's never going to be a, a perfect time where you think, right, now's a chance. Now I'm in a perfect position where I'm earning this much a month. Your problems change as you grow. You're always going to have problems. So there's never going to be a, you know what I'm trying to say, Kev, there's never going to be a that. point. Yeah, everything's going to be perfect. I mean, you've got to like weigh it up a little bit, and you've got to be uncomfortable to to grow. Really? So, well, I, I appreciate that you um, you shared that at the um, yeah. At the I think that's important for people as well. And I put that a little bit on my Instagram before, but I think if people are definitely watching, um, you've got a massive audience. So I think if people are watching and take anything from that or a little bit of information. Um, inspiration and that's great because i know for me looking back and as i said hindsight's always 2020 so it's well the thing is just, you know the the thing is the the truth is okay that um a lot of the times in life for for us me you sorry the postman's come in two seconds can i just answer okay. the door yeah no no Real problem 
on. I'll continue. Um, so I'm glad that Gareth just said that because the truth is, when, when you think about life, when you think about health, when you think about your relationships, when you think about money, when you think about things that happen in life, the, the truth is sometimes it needs something like a wake up call, something that hits you like across the face, something that like, oh shit, that you may have taken for granted. And it needs that. It needs that. I was just saying, Gareth, that it, sometimes it needs that. It needs a wake up call. It needs something to occur in your life where it's real now. It's right there in front of you. Like, holy shit, I can feel it. I can touch it. I can see it. And then it becomes real for you to think, holy shit, I've, I've, got, to, I've got to get out there. I've got to make it happen right now. And fortunately for me, touch wood, mine wasn't health. Like, touch wood, I, I'm really, really glad that it wasn't health. Mine was actually the fact that I thought I was going to lose my job, which put me under an incredible amount of, well, what if I lose my job? What's going to happen to the house? What's going to happen to the family? What am I going to do? What's all this? And I wanted to get really on top of that before the worst was to, to occur. So, the, yeah, and the, and the truth is, like, if you're watching this, don't wait around. You know, don't wait around for something to happen. And, and it's, easier it's, said than done. Yeah. It, it's easier said than done because it's like, how do you recreate? Like, you can't recreate the emotions that you may have felt when you went to hospital. You can't recreate that for some. You can't make it real for somebody. But the only a great exercise that you can do is you know, really think about the future, five years time, 10 years time. If you continue doing what you're doing now, where are you going to end up? What are you going to end up being like? And if it's the still is, a question, yeah. it's not your goals, then you need to make an adjustment. 100%, but at the same time, what's the worst that's going to happen? In the words of the famous Dr. Pepper, what's the worst that's going to happen? In terms of, I mean, try it, and if it doesn't work, just get a job. I mean, it's, as long as you're not wasting loads of money and it's something that you want to try, literally what is the worst that's going to happen? If you want to start Amazon, if you want to start online arbitrage or retail arbitrage, go to a charity shop, set aside 20 quid, buy some books and send them into Amazon. I mean, even if that doesn't work, I think most people could afford to, to lose 20 quid. I mean, some people probably can't, but I mean, most people could afford to put 20 quid to one side, try it out. It might not be for them. And if it's not, who cares? We're not yeah. saying that you have to do it, but if you're in limbo and you're in a position where you're thinking, oh, I need, I need a little kick up the arse. Oh, I don't know what, just try it. That's the hardest part. The hardest part, 100% is just starting. And I think it, like I said earlier at the start of the call or whenever, when you strip it all back, it is incredibly simple. I think you can get overwhelmed by watching too much on YouTube or reading too much or trying to, like I said again, I think I've said this about 20 times, getting all your ducks in a line. You can get so hung up on doing that, you're just wasting time when you don't want to be 40 or 50 and think, oh, what if, or I wish I'd done this, or because I know there's so many people out there who are leveraging towards other people's goals instead of their own, and they hate their job, they hate their boss, they hate their employer, when all they're earning is probably, and I'm not like, I'm not poo-pooing, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I was in exactly the same position. Say all they're earning is, say, a grand a month, doing 40 hours a week, when you think, it's so incredibly easy in the time that, or in the age of, in 2019, to make money online. And if you don't know, you don't know. I mean, I'm not knocking people, but just give it a go. I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen? There, there isn't. Like, it be, like for me, I, I literally have, I don't have any fear, right, at this point. And this happens over a sort of time. But like, to me, I, I've just got to a point where I, I'm absolutely all in. I'm going to give it absolutely everything I've got. I'm going to see where I end up by the time I'm 40 years old and see what I've been able to achieve. If that means I, have, I go through a bankruptcy, then so be it. I'm like, I really, I really don't care at this point because the, the truth is I always thought to myself, do you know what? I do not want to get to 50 years old and have any regrets at all. And I know now being 30 years old, so in 20 years time, I know I'm going to look back and think, you know what, at least when I was 30 years old, I was given everything that I had. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. 100%. I think even with that statement that you just said, I don't think there's anything wrong with having regrets either. I think we live in a world where people are like, oh, no regrets, you shouldn't have any regrets. And that's great. If you're a person that's got no regrets, and I envy you, because I've definitely got regrets in other areas of my life. 
But in terms of Amazon FBA, I've got no regrets at the moment because I've learned from previous experiences. So it's not about having regrets. It's about learning from the regrets and then whatever venture you're then going to go into, giving it 100% and thinking, well, at least if it doesn't work, I can be comfortable with myself and know that I'd give it 100% and try. So, for example, a regret I had was I was in a band for the longest time. I wanted to be a rock star. I wanted to take over the world. I wanted to get signed. I wanted to do it. And we didn't try hard enough. So at the time, I thought we were trying hard enough. We split up when I was 24. And it's only now looking back that I realized, well, we didn't try hard enough. So that's a regret that I've got. But I also learned from that in the sense of, right, with Amazon FBA, I'm going to try as hard as I can and I'm going to put everything into it. And if it doesn't work, then what's the worst that's going to happen? I mean, we just get another job. So, Love it, Gareth. Love it. So where can people find you? So you can find me on Instagram, FBA UK underscore. Um, that's about it, to be honest. I haven't got anything on YouTube. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. If you if you are dying to speak to me and you really want to find me, go on Instagram and it will be FBA UK underscore. And I'm I'm happy to help anybody who. Uh, needs I'll any put help. links. Yeah, I'll put links in the the description below. But I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you for your time this morning, Gareth. It's been yeah. a been great to have a, a chat with you. A, a, a fantastic story. I mean, you've you've gone through some incredibly challenging times it sounds but you're there you're taking massive action you're in your business it's fantastic i'm really really excited about what's going to happen with your future and uh, yeah we'll um we'll go on with the tribe of arbitrages if you guys have got any questions whatsoever please don't hesitate to go in the comment section ask any questions that you can gareth will be there he'll be able to answer your questions please give him a thumbs up just to give him give him a bit of feedback give me a bit of feedback much appreciated, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care and keep taking massive action.